if you look at the pieces of the economy, consumer spending is by far the biggest. It's about two-thirds of the economy. Consumer fundamentals are absolutely fine. Low gasoline prices, good confidence, much lower debt service costs, plenty of pent-up demand. Consumer spending will grow by 25 to 3% this year. Also, housing, home building, is still way, un un we're way underbuilt. That'll grow about 10%. You put those two pieces together, that is over 70% of the economy. There isn't anything weak enough elsewhere in the economy to push us into recession. So we, slow growth, but steady growth. So why is the market selling off? The, mar the market isn't rational in the short run. I think pe people are scared and people are confused. People, nobody understands China. Uh, and also, I think people are very confused about what oil really means for the U.S. economy, for the global economy. So just like last year, there's a lot of confusion. I think what's happening is a lot of investors are holding back, getting invested because of that confusion. But, but the key thing is you've got to look at the economy and then you've got to look at valuations. Mm -hmm. And if you're okay in the economy and valuations are now cheaper because of what's happened uh, last year and the first part of this year, you know, take, take the opportunity. This is a good time to get in. So, Jeremy, he's very sanguine on the, uh, the market at this point, are you? Um, I tend to agree. I think that what's really been the biggest disconnect between the markets right now and you know, the fundamental picture isn't just are we, or are we not going into a recession, but what's the outlook for corporate profits? I mean, keeping it very simple, last year was a flat year for the market. It was a flat year for corporate profits. I think the market at down 8% so far year to date has a overly negative view of what's going to happen to the corporate profit world, just mathematically. So you'd step in here. Yes. So I would say that, look, over the next few months, I think there's going to be continued volatility because we're going to have a lack of clarity around ultimately will China or will China have a hard landing or will they not have a hard landing? What is the impact of lower oil prices? And are we, you know, is there going to have some, you know, cons negative ramifications from extremely low oil prices in terms of, you know, either bank credit losses or some type of financial mm -hmm. accident with a, a potential hedge fund that is, you know, wrong, you know incorrectly positioned, per se? But broadly, I think that the profit picture still looks good, right? I mean, last year, earnings were only flat because energy sector earnings were down 60%. Right, okay. If you take tech, financials, healthcare, consumer discretionary, that's two-thirds of S&P 500 profits. Year-to-date through the third quarter of last year in 2015, 10% year-on-year growth. Even if that gets cut in half, you're still going to have positive growth in corporate profits this year. Uh, and I think cutting in half is probably overly pessimistic. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, I mean, I've heard lack of clarity. I've heard confusion from, from our two prior guests. And the, the title of your piece uh, entering <laughs> this year was, We Have No Idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least you're honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think when you look at it, uh, you know, what David was saying before about the economy not going into recession, we would tend to agree with that. But just because the economy is not going into a recession doesn't mean you're going to have a strong market. And uh, coming into this year, the biggest headwind in our view was valuations. No matter how you look at it, valuations are a above average and in some cases expensive. Then this is not that's not necessarily the fuel for a market sell off, but the, the catalyst for a market sell off, but it is the fuel that can, that once you have the catalyst which can spur the, the declines. And that's what we've seen. We saw the Fed in mid-December hike rates for the first time in almost a decade. And when you look back historically when the Fed hikes rates after a long pause, you tend to get short-term disruptions in the market. It happened in 1994, it happened in 1997, it happened in 2004, and it's happening again now. You have have corrections between 8 and 10 percent. So it's not uncommon to see this. And I think going forward in this market, when you have valuations have come in uh, on the fact that we've had a 10 percent decline, so they're, uh, you know, the PEs come in a little bit, but you're going to have a back and forth market here.